Day 78. That is one of the warmest cars I have ever slept in. I am blown away. I was able to get full temperature and realistically 100% condition back. I'm thirsty and I'm hungry, but happily those are things I can fix easy enough once we get up to the cave where I've been working. If you didn't catch last week's I episode, water. I was able to bring down a bear. I was able to get it uh, quartered, and I was able to get the uh, supplies back up to the shelter. Well, cave would be a better uh, statement, as that's what it really is. But I th suppose any location that uh, gets you out of the elements and keeps you alive another day qualifies as shelter. I thought what I'd do today a little bit, since I'm in a unique situation of, I didn't bring my bedroll. I didn't think this was going to happen. My game plan was simply a scout and a sketch of a location, but when you've got a good kill shot opportunity to get a full bear, to stock up on that much meat, you take the shot. So I did. And now I'm reaping the rewards of that, but it means... I've got to cook several, several quarters of meat. Let me show you how I'm working through that. Let there be light into the cave of processing. I've gotten one of the quarters done already. I'm going to go ahead and grab breakfast. And I'm also going to go ahead and get some water boiled up because I am a thirsty survivor. Let me go ahead and get this taken care of real quick. How is a burning torch ever not a fire starter is one thing I'd like to know. Yes, I know. Drinking boiling water. I get it. But I drink a lot of hot coffee too, so I'm not going to throw too many stones past it. I am highly curious though why we can drink hot coffee, hot teas, and we get the warmth bonus. But, if we drink hot water, we get nothing. That's always going to be an eternal question. Basically though, what we want to do is always keep an eye on the campfire. Make sure we've got plenty of... And then once the fire's going, and you've got meat cooking, then we go ahead and uh, bring our attention to the bear, or to whatever meat you're cooking here. And we get that uh, quartered up. I'm a fan of quartering, because... That gets the meat inside, and I can do most of the work in sheltered territory. Take a look around then, you've got meat cooked up, swap it up, double check your times, and then for the excess raw meat, we just start a pile, and we just sort of uh, drop the raw on one side, and we process it through the fire. We do it again, we repeat history, again. Grab yourself one of the quarters, harvest it up. And we check our fires. About an hour there. I got a lot of cooking in front of me, so we're going to go ahead and add another uh, stick onto the Barbie here. Okay. Two hours and change, that's good. 31 minutes. One minute. Oh, you're going to drop any time in a second. I bet you if I walk away... See? I knew... <laughs> I knew that thing was going to change the second I turned from it. Oh, well. Alright. And then we just kind of repeat history. Drop the raw, cook it up, and then we'll move it over to the cook pile at the other end like you saw. Something's making just me feel keep tired. doing that. Okay. Uh, if you take a look at my sleep bar, you can tell I've literally spent the day cooking, and I'm already exhausted. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, spend a night down in the back seat again. And uh, if I'm going to go all the way down there, and I can't have a fire there, I'm going to give myself a warming up bonus to at least get down there on, and to you know sit in the car if I need to. I really think if you're in the car, if it's close, I think your body heat may warm them up, 
If not, that car has been ridiculously warm this entire couple of days, because we're knocking on about, depending on your point of view of like hours awake versus sunrises and such, this has to be about day 79. And so for the last two or three days, that car has been my bed, and it has worked well. I've been surprised at how much condition I've been able to keep literally just crashing in the back seat. So pro tip, make sure you check uh, the temperatures on that, but backseat of the car can save your life. Alright, here we are again, check the temperature. 39 degrees, yeah man. Anything over 32 is good, I'm happy there, so. Uh, stats aren't too bad, let's go ahead and uh, top off the water. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some sleep here. Um, it's the middle of the night. Uh, let's take it to eight. Let's take it to eight here. All right. Oh my gosh. I could use a drink. Decent morning too. Okay. Nice bag. I did call it right with uh, cutting it to eight. I'm already into the red with uh, my water, so. That's not too bad then. Uh, it's going to be repeat history. I mean, I've got a ridiculous amount of meat I've got to cook. I just kind of wanted to show you the cycle and pattern I usually try to set up to keep it cooking effectively, efficiently, multitasking as much as possible. I know we all wish we could do that more. I'm going to go ahead and do the grind. Looks like a new you day skip is the time, done. And I'll catch up with you in a bit. And several hours later. You can see what we've processed this all down to. Uh, you know, there's two more pieces of meat I need to cook, but at this point I want to start getting it moved over to uh, the main base over in uh, Grey Mother's house. Uh, some of the, you know, rewards of my efforts, some skins and stuff there, more of the meat, <laughs> piles and piles of meat, entrails, uh, you know, so this was a good haul. What I want to do right now is start getting the important stuff hauled over. This is going to be a long trip to get it all there. So let me go ahead, pack up the pack, and uh, we'll start heading back. One more? Nope! That's going to sprain the ankle. Okay. So, go ahead and uh, drop one. Okay. So, we're at max weight. You can't ask for much more than that. Alrighty. Okay, so let's go ahead. So this cave gives us a little bit of a shortcut back to Grey Mother's house. So we'll go ahead and uh, take advantage of that shortcut, as well as the fact that it's out of the elements. So I can't complain about that whatsoever. From what I can tell, though, it's a one-way trip. There is a ledge that I know I can hop down, but to my understanding, I cannot get up because there's no jump button. So, if someone knows a trick on how to make that trip, you know, the opposite way, I would actually appreciate your efforts in uh, illuminating me on that. And this cave, of course, has the stupid duck under that part, but I suppose that's pretty realistic to a lot of caving. In fact, from what I hear, that's actually very gracious of an entry. A lot of caves are a lot tighter than that. We'll go ahead and get ourselves out. I'm concerned about the weather now that I've spent the entire day kind of cooking, but I'm in decent condition. I kind of just want to start getting the supplies back to grandmothers. I feel like I've been living here literally about two or three days. Oh, isn't this going to be pleasant? <laughs> um, minus 17 wind chill. Hang on. Mama didn't raise no fool. Uh-uh. Let's get back in here. Good gosh, that, that's just ugly. That's what that is. That is ugly. Alright, we're going to get back in the cave here. And 
you know, if I had the lantern fuel in a book, I'd read a book. I, th I really kind of hate skipping time, but we're just going to go ahead and pass time. We're going to take an hour at a time. I've got the calories to burn. And we're just going to wait to see if we can uh, get this storm to pass a little bit. See if sunrise helps. I'm not that far from uh, where I want to go. But I sure as heck don't want to die on that trip. Third one. Let sunrise really get up and burn it off maybe. Okay, that looks more inviting. Survey says... That's a lot better. I can deal with that. What's, what's that and prove it to? 10 degrees positive. I can deal with that. Excellent. Okay. We got some snowfall, but it's lighter com by comparison. Even if it just stays like that, I could deal with it. But uh, I think it's on the lightning side, I think. Alright, so we're all up here. Yeah, right around here, and I'm serious about this. There is this ledge right here underneath the tree that, uh, this portion right up in front of me. We can hop down it, but to my knowledge, we can't climb up it, and I don't know of another option on, you know, how to get up this side of the wall. Uh, to get up there again. If you guys know, if there's a trick I'm missing, I'll admit, I don't know everything about this game, I would greatly appreciate uh, comments down below. <sighs> I hear you. Yeah, I love hearing wolves while I'm hauling a whole frickin' pack full of meat. I'm always paranoid in this game. And I, I kind of don't want to, you know, hunt anything else. Because I've already got more meat than I can carry in one go. So I'd like to, you know, just kind of prep and prepare what I've got and get it stowed away. And call it a happy day. I don't necessarily want to just keep stacking it up. Especially when I'm uh, trying to do a game where I want to keep moving. I'm trying to play Nomadic. I'm trying to literally map the entirety of Great Bear Island. You know, supplies are great, but I don't necessarily want to have a super base. I prefer to have outposts with supplies scattered around so I can kind of dot to dot to dot and stay alive and go decently. And to me, this really feels like the snow is starting to lighten up a little bit more. So I'll take that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Getting kind of thirsty. I always feel like those <clears throat> limbs are going to break on them. Or they should at least. Okay, I don't have any water to drink. I don't really feel like stopping and boiling it up right now. Because we're ridiculously close to Milton proper. I see the tower right there. The other three are white, though, so we're fine. In general, one red stat, especially with the light shade of red that it is, one red stat you can usually manage yourself on. That's how a lot of people, especially an interloper, go hungry for most of the day and go to sleep on supper. Uh, it's when you start getting two, three red lines, that's when you know you're really hurt and really going on trouble there, so... Little pro tip is there's uh, one red line. Monitor, but don't freak out. Try not to get into the two or three red lines. At that point, set up a camp, set up a bed, set up a fire, do whatever, get yourself patched back together. I need to find some place to escape this Back's cold. The radio tower. Looking at the ominous mountain that I'm probably going to be heading to here soon. Don't want to think about that. Okay. Coming over the last ridge, I think, if I'm not mistaken. <sighs> and I believe 
Oh, there is a site for sore eyes. Grey Mother's house. Well, this has been a heck of a couple of days. This is one heck of a one-day scout. <laughs> but, uh, if adventures like this are something that you like, I drop videos like this each week. If you want to know if I live to see tomorrow, leave a like and subscribe. I'm Commander Tom. Thanks.